Hello, my name is Jacob George. I'm from the Stall Liver Unit. And on my right, we have Professor Don Chisholm and Dr. Kerry Lee Milner from the Garvin Institute. As most of you know, chronic hepatitis C is a well-known cause of chronic liver disease with cirrhosis and liver cancer. Since the mid-1990s, it's been appreciated that chronic hepatitis C is also associated with type 2 diabetes. In 2003, we published an article in Gastroenterology which suggested that this association was due to a relationship such that hepatitis C increased insulin resistance in patients. However, this original study was done using the relatively imprecise HOMA method. In the current study, we sought to determine whether insulin resistance and hepatitis C were associated using the gold standard hyperinsulinemic euglycemic clamp, together with deuterated glucose to determine whether the insulin resistance in hepatitis C was at the level of the hepatocyte or at the periphery. In type 2 diabetes, there is a relationship between liver fat and insulin resistance. In hepatitis C, genotype 1 and 3 patients differ markedly with regard to liver lipid, and so we sought to, in this study, determine the relationship between liver fat and insulin resistance in genotypes 1 and 3 patients. We compared our data to matched controls who were matched for age, gender, and body weight. Kerry Lee, I wonder if you'd like to discuss the CLAMP study results. Thanks, Jacob. We did confirm insulin resistance in the chronic Hep C subjects, both at the low and high dose insulin CLAMPs. Moreover, to our surprise, the insulin resistance was peripheral rather than hepatic. As adipose tissue responded normally to insulin in that free fatty acid secretion was suppressed in the clamp in the hep C subjects, we were able to conclude that the insulin resistance was mainly in muscle. Interestingly, the insulin resistance was identical in genotype 1 and genotype 3, despite a threefold increase in liver fat in genotype 3. Therefore, Liver fat is clearly not an important determinant of insulin resistance in the context of hepatitis C. This study did not confirm the mechanism of insulin resistance in hepatitis C. However, two important predictors of insulin resistance were viral load and subcutaneous fat, suggesting that the virus may alter adipokine secretion or free fatty acid release from subcutaneous fat, both which could generate insulin resistance. Don, would you like to discuss the glucagon and insulin results? Yes. We showed for the first time that in hepatitis C there's a significant elevation of glucagon levels which may relate to insulin resistance at the alpha cell. We don't think this is important in generating the insulin resistance because glucagon only alters glucose metabolism at the liver. More importantly, we showed that insulin secretion is normal or actually increased slightly to compensate with the insulin resistance, clearly indicating hepatitis C does not induce a beta cell defect. And therefore, the people who get diabetes with hepatitis C are probably getting it because they're part of the ordinary 20% of the community who've got that predisposition of the beta cell and it's being brought forward by the insulin resistance of hepatitis C. Jacob, back to you. Yes, there is a conundrum from the data that we've presented. We clearly show that insulin resistance in hepatitis C is peripheral. However, multiple other studies have also shown that insulin resistance is a negative predictor of treatment response. And treatment inhibits viral replication within the liver. So how does insulin resistance in the periphery inhibit viral replication at the level of the hepatocyte? That is not clearly answered from our studies. Is it that the insulin resistance is a surrogate marker for something else? Does the periphery secrete some molecules or adipokines that influence viral replication in the liver? Or is there some other effect happening in the liver to inhibit viral replication when treatment is initiated with interferon and ribavirin is currently unclear but these data certainly provide the basis for future studies.